Welcome back. I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're wrapping up our four part series on good practices for duct system design. Part four is how we come up for a plan for repairs and how we address zone imbalances. Without further ado, here's the training. So let's talk about some of the, the telltale signs of what you see out there when you talk about existing duct systems. Number one reason, I would say still uh, is inadequate return ducts, right? So that's when the supply duct may be sized correctly, but the return duct is much smaller than it needs to be. And we see this uh, when you replace an inefficient, older 80% furnace, let's say, and put in a much higher volume of air, high efficient furnace, because now instead of that heat going out the flue pipe, it's actually gonna need a bigger bus to deliver the BTUs to the space not let it go outside, right? So need more CFM when you do that. And a lot of times uh, we originally used to see this on 80% furnaces when we were doing design, when we'd add an A coil on top of it and we needed more volume of air and air conditioning. But what we're starting to find out these days is it's quite possible with a high efficient furnace, we need more air and heating in the Northeast than we do in some instances with air conditioning. The way to find this out, if the system is still running, it's really easy to just check the static pressure in the return duct and in the supply duct, right? So as close to the, to the furnace or the, the blower as possible um, after any sort of add-on IEQ products like a filter or something like that in the blower section. And then of course, prior to an A coil, if it's an AC add-on, if it's not, um, if it's just a, a let's say a, a, an air handler for a heat pump, you can just check in the supply duct and get the static pressure there. Now this should be pretty balanced and the total static pressure needs to be at least the maximum or less, right? So if you have a PSC style motor, that's probably 0.5 total. So let's say negative 0.25 on the return, positive 0.25 on the supply. It's a balanced duct system. Um, of course, if it's imbalanced, the more negative in the return or the more positive in the supply, you can check, you can see which side of the system is uh, inadequate, right? Um, if the return duct's too small, you'll have a much more negative pressure in the return than the positive pressure in the supply. Should be pretty balanced there. Now, of course, you could have the opposite. You could have undersized supply ducts and plenty of return. And I used to see this a lot with big return duct uh, central returns, which we don't really want to do these days. Um, and let's say the old Coleman furnaces, they used to have four inch round uh, takeoffs off of all of the supply, right? The, the Maybe a box or a trunk that goes down the middle of the, the building and just small runs. And when you go to add AC to this, you're gonna have a much higher static pressure in the supply. Now, the number one reason I typically used to see a, what we thought was a supply duct problem was really not setting the airflow up correctly. All of these furnaces and air handlers come preset from the manufacturer, typically on the higher of the drives for the airflow. A lot of times you can have a one to three ton drive or a one and a half to three ton drive, two and a half to three and a half, let's say, or four ton drive, and then a three to five ton drive. If you had a three to five ton drive, it probably comes from the factory set for five tons of air, and you might've put a three and a half ton or a four ton coil on it, right? So you need to turn the airflow down to match the airspeed needed, what the design was in that instance. Otherwise, you're gonna check static pressure and it's gonna be through the roof and that ECM motor might be cranking in order to try to get there. So keep in mind, supply and return should be fairly balanced. If you have inadequate supply duct, you're gonna see a much higher static pressure in the supply when you're measuring this with a, with a static pressure probe and just a simple dual input manometer. Um, you could use, uh, you could use an incline manometer or uh, something that actually uses water like the old Dwyer gauges I have. Uh, most people don't use that anymore, particularly because if you have really high static pressure, um, it could just suck that stuff right in the return. I've done that more than once. All right. And then of course, when you're looking for leakage, there's some really easy telltale signs. Of course, there's the point where ducts are disconnected or broken or splitting apart or the insulation's just disintegrated off of it and you can see air leakage, right? That's one. Um, and usually that's simple to see, right? You know when you have old R4 or older insulation that's breaking down and the leakage that's there. But take a look at the takeoffs and if you see 
um, any sort of like ghosting or, or in this case, like uh, a little bit of dust that's constantly going across that, whether it's pulling air in or exhausting out, you're going to see leakage. You'll know it's there without doing a lot of investigation. You just got to take a look at where those uh, pieces connect. And you can see this if you have fiberglass insulation, you could pull it back from where the boot connects to the ceiling and you can see all that dust that was going through it over the years. Um, even when the system's off, if there's natural convection through the ceiling, because nobody sealed the boot to the ceiling, you're gonna see all that dust collect in that fiberglass, almost like it's a filter, right? So um, really important to look for those history of leaks um, and note it and make sure the install team or the service team actually improves the duct system when you go back and replace the unit, right? Um, you wanna make sure you account for either not doing the improvements in your load calc or account for doing the improvements and actually measure the difference and know that the system sized right afterwards if you do a duct leakage test. Uh, of course, uh, we can't use pan bays for returns anymore. If you see this, hopefully when you're doing system replacements, you can let the homeowner know you need to put a return duct system in. You can't just you leave that pan bay. No, I, trust me, I've tried. I've tried to air seal bays. It's close to impossible. Okay, you have to pull all that panning down, seal all the penetrations and all of the spots where uh, wires and piping and where the where the joist doesn't quite touch the flooring. Um, and then, of course, if you're just pulling from an open cavity, that's even worse like this on the right hand side. You're going to have to duct in returns in order to even do a duct leakage test. Otherwise, we, I mean, let's be honest, we can't be pulling air from outside and expect the air conditioner to keep up. Right. That's why we used to see five ton condensers on these colonial houses in the northeast. It's crazy. We don't need that much if we actually design the duct system and follow good practices. So when you make this plan to repair those jobs, the first thing you should be doing is sketching the duct system. Just sketch it out. Really simple. I used to do this on just a piece of paper. Um, and then I would notate and evaluate the system's conditions, um, where the duct ceiling, where the team needs to focus on the uh, on duct ceiling or insulation. If we're going to re be replacing, let's say, flexible duct runs and leaving the trunk if we can, right? Um, but when we take that off, we're going to seal all the takeoffs off the trunk and then put new flex on, right? Um, we're going to talk about uh, re-insulating. It's going to be a lot easier to do when you pull all those runs off. Um, and then really, to be honest, you should be doing room by room CFM calculations. And in order to do that, you got to do a room by room load calculation. That's how you can verify that those runs are going to be the right size with the new system. And then when everything is said and done, you must do a combustion safety check because you're improving the house. You're improving the house as a system by pulling air from the space. And there's a lot of central returns out there from hallways, different areas. And you don't want to pull combustion products back from a naturally vented, let's say, water heater in the basement um, or a fireplace and, and evenly distribute that carbon monoxide around the house. It's really, really important. If you do any duct system improvements or system replacements, you must do a combustion safety check if you have atmospheric appliances in the space, all right? Um, just to remember here, when you're correcting zone imbalances, let's say you do this test and you have more than a three Pascal, that's the, that's the pressure in metric, right? Good dual input manometers will measure Pascals as well as inches of water column. Um, so if you measure across these zones and you have more than a three Pascal difference, you need to remediate that space. That might be adding a return to a bedroom or putting in, in this example, you can see this picture, putting in a jump duct across those bedrooms, right? But keep in mind, now you're going to be circulating air through an unconditioned space in order to balance that out. So really, really important. You test this. You don't want to depressurize a hallway and pull that combustion product air back from the basement um, because now you sealed everything up and the air is only coming from there, not coming from the attic anymore. All right. Three Pascals is the max. Anything more than that, you want to make sure you're remediating. So what did you think? Did you like how we wrapped up good practices for duct system design? Keep in mind, this was a four part training that was done all at once for my Patreon members one year ago. If you like this sort of training and you wanna get it one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $8 a month. Thanks again for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.